we will continue with the liquid liquid extraction. In liquid liquid extraction you are trying to recover a solute from a fermentation broth or from a reaction medium after a bio transformation using a solvent. And as I mentioned the solvent could be a heavy solvent or it could be a light solvent. Uh, this is one of the best processes for biological uh, molecules like biomolecules because uh, you operate at room temperature and uh, ambient conditions. So, the, mo the molecule does not get deactivated or denatured during this process. There are two important principles in uh, liquid liquid extraction one is the thermodynamics other is the mass transfer. Mass transfer determines the rate at which the solute moves from the heavy or the fermentation broth into the solvent layer. So, if the mass transfer rate is very high the movement of the solute is very fast. So, we can achieve the um, extraction very fast if the mass transfer rate is very slow then the extraction efficiency is very very slow. So, there are different ways of uh, improving the mass transfer um, rate from the heavy to the light phase one of the approaches is to improve the agitation that means you create turbulence so that uh, the mass transfer rate is very high. You create very fine particles so that the amount of uh, surface area per volume is also very large. So, the solute can get transferred from the heavy phase to the light phase. So, mass transfer is very very important in determining the time it takes for performing the extraction. The next one is the thermodynamics, thermodynamics determines how much can be extracted that means the maximum under ideal conditions what will be the maximum amount of solute that can be extracted from the fermentation into the solvent layer. So, this particular uh, parameter is based on the partition coefficient or it is also called the, the standard uh, chemical potential. So, it determine it is based on the standard chemical potential or the partition coefficient for the particular system under consideration. So, if the partition coefficient is very very large then uh, your extraction uh, amount also will be considerable that means, the um, quantity of uh, the solute that is present in the solvent as against the quantity that is present in the uh, fermentation broth after they have come and into contact and reached an equilibrium um, will be very very large. Um, liquid liquid extraction is also a stage process just like uh, any other stage process like adsorption, absorption, distillation, chromatography they are all called stage processes. That means, there is a stage uh, two streams come and meet they interact and then they reach an equilibrium or steady state and then two streams leave. So, a solute or a metabolite or a protein or a biomolecule gets transferred from one stream to another stream. It could be because of the uh, vapor pressure reasons, because of the solubility reasons, because of the partitioning, because of the adsorption coefficient. So, because of so many other uh, physico chemical principles it may be moving from one stream to another stream that is why this is also called a stage process. So, as you can see from this picture you have two streams entering the feed which contains um, your solute of interest it is also called heavies. <coughs> and uh, it is coming out of the fermentation uh, uh, process. The solvent is your extracting medium, solvent could be chloroform, dichloromethane, ethyl acetate, sometimes even we use water um, and so many other uh, alcohols organic alcohols. Um, and then once the extraction is done the extract contains most of your uh, solute and the raffinate contains uh, uh, minimum amount of solute and these two streams are in equilibrium at the end of the process that is why it is called a stage process and it is also called a equilibrium process. And the ratio, ratio of the concentration in the extract to the raffinate is what is called the your um, partition coefficient. Now, if you look at biological systems, biological systems create many problems during extraction unlike a normal chemical system because uh, the feed will have a very high viscosity because of presence of uh, cells, biomass, intracellular material, DNA 
cell debris and so on. So, the viscosity is going to be very high. So, obviously, your extraction efficiency is low. There may be very low density difference between the aqueous feed and the organic solvent. So, if the density difference is very low, then the separation time of the two streams into two different distinct layers is going to be a time consuming. It will take a long time, because most of the separation we assume is based on the difference in the densities. So, the two liquids separate out nicely and we can remove the bottoms and the top layers independently of each other. High solid content, as you know fermentation broth contains a large number of salts which you add. Um, so, there is going to be a lot of solid present. The solids are going to hinder your extraction. Now, there could be many surface active species present which may lead to emulsification of your extraction. So, at the end of the extraction instead of getting two clear distinct layers, you may end up with the multiple layers. Uh, you may have a foamy layer in the middle, you may have a solid layer in the middle. So, you may have instead of two layers, you may have four layers. <coughs> one could be your solvent and one could be your original broth and then there could be some layer which may contain a large no amount of precipitated solid. There could be another layer which may be having a froth or foams created because of the presence of the surface active species. So, one way of uh, overcoming these problem is to first do a filtration. So, when we do a filtration the precipitated solids or biomass or surface active species can be removed and then you resort to the extraction. But then there is a problem you have the desired soil solute can also get carried away during the filtration process. So, uh, you need to keep that point in mind some of your efficiency may go down during the filtration operation. So, you have advantages, but again you have disadvantages. So, if the density difference is very low instead of resorting to the normal extractors which I talked about uh, in the previous class uh, column extractors or uh, agitated extractors, we may even go to centrifugal contactors. Nowadays, uh, there is a lot of interest in uh, liquid liquid centrifuges, where uh, uh, the normal centrifuge we are used to is a solid liquid centrifuge, where you are trying to remove the solid or filter the solid out using a centrifuge. <coughs> but here we are talking about liquid liquid centrifuge and the div density difference creates the separation. That means, the um, higher density liquid will reach the walls faster because of the centrifugal force. So, the walls will, will have predominantly um, more higher density liquid and the lower density liquid will, will be more in the middle portion. So, centrifugal contactors is another way of separating out these two layers instead of uh, resorting to uh, um, settling based on uh, uh, simple gravity. So, the advantage it is going to be shorter time because separation can be achieved because of the high forces uh, you are using. Um, it is practiced in um, extraction of antibiotics uh, from the fermentation broth. There are two types of uh, centrifuges you can uh, resort to for biological systems. One is the single stage disk stack separators other one is the multi stage differential contactors. So, just like uh, the solid liquid centrifuge where we have a stack of disks uh, placed in the middle or near the shaft, you can also here also have a stack of uh, disks, um, but it will be a single stage. Then another approach by which you can uh, um, achieve is having multiple stages of centrifuge. That means, you will have more than one set of centrifuges for separating out the um, two distinct layers of the liquid. Now, you can perform this liquid liquid extraction either in a batch mode or in a continuous mode. So, in a batch mode you can have a single stage that means, you have one big vessel where you mix both the liquids and you have uh, <coughs> separations taking place or you can have many small small vessels and each vessel can be considered as a stage where there is a contact between the two fluids and the separation or the extraction takes place in each stage. So, <coughs> that is called a multi stage batch operation. <coughs> the continuous extraction can be done either in a co current mode or in a counter current mode. That means, both the streams may be flowing in the same direction and that may that is called co current 
or the streams could be flowing in opposite directions that is called a counter current. Um, counter current is generally preferred because uh, <coughs> the extraction efficiency is much higher than the co current mode actually. Let us look at uh, the batch extractor, it is a stage process, the aqueous feed is mixed with the organic solvent and then once they have reached an equilibration, the two layers get separated, your desired uh, solute is present in the extract, the raffinate is uh, uh, the uh, spent feed and both these uh, streams are taken out. So, we can calculate what is the equilibrium concentration of the solute in these two phases. Okay. We know the concentration that is entering the feed and after the extraction, we will be able to calculate the concentration in this as well as in this place. There are two ways by which we can do, one is called the analytical method, other is called the graphical method. Let us look at analytical method. Okay, Let us just draw a stage, you have a feed entering and the concentration of the solute in the feed is x f, the feed is leaving after the extraction, the same amount of feed concentration uh, of the solute is x r in the raffinate. Now, you are introducing a solvent and the concentration of solute in the solvent is y naught and um, it has picked up or it has extracted your uh, solute. So, the concentration has gone up from y naught to y 1. The most important assumption here is the miscibility between the feed and the solvent is 0. If there is going to be miscibility, then uh, f will not be same here as well as here, s will not be same here as well as here. So, keep you have to keep that in mind. One of our main assumption is there is no miscibility between the two streams. That is why when you select a solvent, you have to be very careful so that you they are not miscible with each other. If you are going to have a miscible system, then the efficiency will fall down dramatically. Okay. Now, so we have two streams that are entering and two streams that are leaving. So, we can make a mass balance for this, quite straightforward. We have been doing mass balance for the past several classes. So, we can do a mass balance for the solute f into x f, that is f is the flow rate, x f is your concentration, that is the amount of solute entering in the stream. S into y naught, that is the amount of solute entering from the solvent stream this is the amount of solute entering in the feed stream, this is the amount of solute entering in the solvent stream. Now, there are two streams that are leaving your stage, one is the solvent, other is your the, the raffinate. So, again you can do a mass balance on this side f x r plus s y 1. So, this is your entire overall mass balance for the solute. Inputs is equal to output, quite straightforward. So, once you do that and we know that the partition coefficient k is given like the ratio of the concentration of uh, your uh, these two solute concentration in these two streams, right. So, it will be k is equal to y 1 by x r and y 1 is going to be larger than x r. So, obviously, k will be larger than 1. So, higher the value of k more efficient is your extraction process. Okay. So, the assumptions immiscibility of the feed and the solvent number 1 and number 2 when initial solvent does not contain any solute then y naught will be equal to 0 correct. So, we put y naught equal to 0. So, what happens f into x f the y naught term has become 0 is equal to f into x r plus s into k into x r instead of y 1 I put k into x r here. Now, we can rearrange to get x r, x r is the concentration leaving the stage is equal to x f multiplied by f divided by f plus s k correct. Now, we will call e efficiency factor E is equal to S k by f. So, if you do that, then what you get x r is equal to x f by 1 plus z. That means, x r is equal to 
x f that is the concentration entering divided by 1 plus e and e is going to be larger than 1. So, 1 plus e will be larger than 1. So, x r will always be less than x f okay? because you have done some extraction. So, the concentration here will be much less than the concentration in the feed. Now, what is the fraction extracted? Fraction extracted is given by x f is the initial concentration, x r is the concentration after extraction divided by x f. So, x f minus x r by x f. So, if you rearrange and substitute this, you will get fraction extracted equal to e by 1 plus e. right? So, this is a very important uh, equation, because when I have a when I have a extraction liquid liquid extraction, I would like to know um, given the e particular value of k, given a particular value of the solvent flow rate, given a particular value of feed flow rate or heavy flow rate, how much fraction that can be extracted in the stage. So, all you need to do is calculate E from this E is equal to S k by F and then E divided by 1 plus E gives you the fraction extracted very good. So, similarly by doing a mass balance we can get a, a, a um, equation for y 1 as well okay? that is the amount in the in the solvent layer. So, if k is large most of the solute will be extracted into the solvent because E also will be large. Correct? So, if k is very large if you see this equation E is equal to S k by F. So, if k is very large E also is going to be very large. So, you select a solvent so that your k is very very large. Okay. How do you use a graphical method for solving? Just like uh, adsorption if you recall okay, you will have an operating line, you will have an equilibrium line. The operating line is your mass balance, the equilibrium line is nothing but your y is equal to k x type of line. Okay. So, why does uh, there is a slight uh, bend here? The bend could be because you may have different value the k changing as a function of concentration. So, in that case then you may have a bend otherwise if k remains constant irrespective of concentration then this also should be a straight line. So, just like in adsorption um, we will see where the equilibrium line intersects with the operating line and um, that particular point will be the uh, concentration of the solute in the um, solvent layer uh, that is leaving the ex liquid liquid extractor. Okay. Now, let us go to a multi stage system all we did so far is single stage system that means you have one unit or uh, one stage where uh, you you mix your solvent with this with the feed and then you separate them out. So, extraction is done in one stage generally extractions are not very efficient in a single stage we need multiple stages 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on actually. Okay. So, let us see how the equations differ <coughs> when you have multiple stages. The first type of uh, stage operation let us consider cross flow design that means you have a stage your feed is entering solvent is entering here it is extracted. Now, whatever has been extracted raffinate that goes to the next stage again you are adding some fresh solvent something is getting extracted. So, again the raffinate leaves from stage 2 that goes to stage 3 again fresh solvent is introduced again you extract like that you can have large number of stages you can call it n stages and you are every time adding fresh solvent. So, all these extracts from each of the stage will be combined together and then that particular extract will be very rich in your solute. Okay. This is called a cross flow because your feed is flowing like this your solvent is coming crosswise from the top okay. and every time the assumption here is you are adding fresh solvent that means concentration of the solute in the fresh solvent is 0. So, you can have a general equation like this x i that is concentration of the solute leaving the stage i will be equal to concentration of the solute entering the stage divided by 1 plus e or 
if you do your overall mass balance considering n distinct stages x r that is the concentration um, of the solute in the raffinate will be equal to x f divided by 1 plus e raised to the power n, n is your number of stages very simple equation very very simple equation. Okay. So, if I give you n stages and if I give you the value of uh, the um, k the amount of uh, solvent you are taking the amount of feed you can calculate what will be the final concentration of the solute in the raffinate after n stages or conversely we can do it the other way. If I want to have an extraction efficiency of say 90 percent how many stages do I require. So, I can do that sort of calculation. So, we can do both types of calculation understand given value of k given the value of s and f and given the number of stages I will know everything on the right hand side. Okay. So, then I can calculate what will be the concentration of the solute in the exit or given that I want to recover 90 percent of my feed that means, uh, x r will be 0.1 x f and if I know E I can calculate n. Okay. So, I can do both. So, this equation becomes very very important if uh, um, I am using a multi stage cross flow extraction system how many stages do I require um, or what will be my extraction efficiency. Let us look at uh, one or two problems, so that uh, some of these concepts get uh, really cleared up. There is some solute in a fermentation broth, the amount is 6.8 milligrams per liter, quantity of broth is 82 liters. Now, I add 1 liter of solvent to extract this solute, the partition coefficient is 170. You see, you will you select a solvent, so that the partition coefficient is very large. So, the partition coefficient is 170, what is the fraction extracted? Very simple, first you have to calculate E, E is given by S k by f, S k by f. Okay. So, your k is 170, uh, S is 82 liters, sorry S is uh, 1 liter and your uh, f is 82 liters. So, you get E as 2.01, 2.07. Fraction extracted formula is E divided by 1 plus E. So, if I substitute these terms here, I will get 0.67. That means, 67 percent of the fraction of the feed can be extracted in a single stage. Now, imagine I am using another stage and I am adding again 1 liter of this solvent to whatever has been extracted, I want to calculate what is the overall extraction efficiency. What is the overall extraction efficiency? Now, I have two stages, this is also a cross flow understand, because I am again adding fresh solvent 1 liter fresh solvent in the second stage. So, the feed which the raffinate which is leaving stage 1 goes into stage 2. Now, you want to calculate what is the overall extraction efficiency. So, n here is 2, you know your E. So, again you substitute here, so you get a fraction extracted as 89 percent. So, if I have one single stage, I will extract 67 percent of my solute. If I have two stages, the overall efficiency is 89 percent. So, if I have three stages, it may go up to 92 percent, if I have four stages, it may go up to 95 like that you know, because uh, you have uh, uh, 1 plus e raised to the power n, um, it will not be a, a simple algebraic addition type, but it will be in this uh, slow steps. So, one stage will have very high extraction, second stage overall will come down and so on actually. So, if you are really interested in extracting all your uh, um, solute, it could be a protein of interest or it could be an antibiotic of interest. So, you may resort to several a stage uh, operation, so that you recover as much as possible completely as possible. So, this is a cross flow type of uh, design. So, 
we will later on look at counter current flow type of design. The main disadvantage of cross flow is every time you have to add uh, a fresh solvent that means, uh, the solvent usage is going to be very very high. Whereas, in the counter current design uh, the solvent which is leaving stage 1 will enter stage 2 um, that way you are not using too much of solvent unlike the cross flow design. And uh, the equations for uh, the counter current design changes when compared to your uh, uh, cross flow design we will look at it uh, later. But bef before that we will look at something else. Now, so far we assumed uh, that the solute uh, does not dissociate, but then uh, so in many situations uh, at different pH conditions the solute may dis uh, dissociate it could be a weak acid or a weak base. So, when something dissociates the number of species present also increases and dissociation normally takes place in aqueous medium, because only in water um, a salt can dissociate an acid can dissociate into proton um, or a base can dissociate into a hydroxyl ion, but not in the solvent medium please remember that actually. And this dissociation depends upon the pH condition. So, depending upon the pH and whether it is a weak acid or a weak base um, it will dissociate faster or it will not dissociate faster. Okay. Let us look at uh, dissociation of weak acids and how um, your equations are going to get affected because of that. Imagine a weak acid RCOOH it uh, dissociates to RCOO minus and H plus. Okay. Now, the equilibrium uh, partition coefficient k and um, by definition there are uh, two species here okay, and uh, there is uh, one species here actually. Okay. So, you have to keep that in mind and uh, the overall k is given by R C O H in the light phase, light phase is the solvent phase and uh, R C O H in the heavy phase, but the point in heavy or aqueous phase is uh, the acid is present in this form as well as in the R C O O minus form. So, you need to consider both the species do not forget that. Whereas, in the solvent phase it does not dissociate like if it is a um, solvent like chloroform or methanol it does not dissociate. So, there is only one species. So, here we have only one species in the light phase or the solvent phase whereas, here we have two species in the heavy phase or the aqueous phase okay. and the two species are R C O O H and the R C O minus. Now, let us look at k i that is the intrinsic partition coefficient can be R C O H in the light phase R C O H in the heavy phase. So, these two partition coefficients are different this is k which considers all the species whereas, this is k i which considers only the, the R acid. Okay. Now, k a is called the association constant of the weak acid and that is given by R C O O minus into H plus divided by R C O O H. This uh, you might have studied long time back okay. this is called the association constant or the dissociation constant and the p k a is the negative logarithm of k a to the base 10. Okay. You must have all heard about p k a right. So, now this p k a k i k a are all interrelated in this form logarithm to the base 10 k i minus k minus 1 is equal to p h minus p k a. So, p h has a very strong effect on uh, these terms here, because p h affects the dissociation of the weak acid to proton. So, that way p h will have an effect on these uh, dissociation constant as well as with respect to the um, your partition coefficient. Similarly, for weak bases also as you know weak bases uh, ends up with the hydroxyl ion and uh, you are going to have instead of p k a here you are going to have p k b. So, this is how the equation looks like where um, the p h has an effect on the partition coefficient. Okay, now, why is it so important 
that comes out from a problem. Imagine I want to extract a sugar from water with an organic solvent. So, it has got a k value of 0 0.0064 moles per cc at a pH of 4, it has got a k value of 0 0.0022 moles per cc at a pH value of 5.8. You see the k values change, k values are changed because of the and the pH effect, because the dissociation of the weak acid. Now, I would like to calculate the k value at a pH of 7. So, if uh, the k value changes that means, if your partition coefficient changes the efficiency of extraction also is going to change. So, um, you need to identify the best pH where your k is maximum, so that your extraction is also very very high. So, all you need to do is you need to substitute uh, into this previous equation log 10 k i by k minus 1 is equal to p h minus p k a. I know at two different p h what is my k value. So, I can calculate k i and p k a from those two equations. So, once I calculate I at p h of 7 I can calculate what will be my k value very straightforward. So, I have been given at two different p h the k value. So, from those two equations I can calculate the k i and p k a for the system. Once I calculate for a p h of 7 I can calculate what will be k. So, one important point you need to keep in mind that uh, the k varies depending upon p h for uh, weak acids and um, weak bases. So, you need to identify the best p h so, that your k is maximum. If the k is maximum, you are going to have a good uh, extraction. So, you may have to do lot of uh, experiments the effect of p h on the extraction efficiency before you decide on the p h. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, we looked at uh, cross flow design and uh, I said it is not very efficient because every time in each stage you need to add fresh solvent. So, your solvent usage is going to be very very high. So, there is something called a co current design and a counter current design. So, in a co current design what you have is you have the solvent entering stage 1, feed is also entering stage 1 and then uh, both of them are leaving stage 1 and then both of them enter stage 2 they get mixed and then there are two streams leaving and so on. So, it keeps happening for n stages. So, you have finally, a raffinate starting from a feed and then you have a final extract. So, the same solvent is flowing in all the stages extracting the solute at each stage. So, you are not adding any more extra um, solvent. So, the solvent usage is not very high. So, that is the main advantage of uh, these type of uh, uh, designs. Contrary to co current this is a counter current system. So, what is happening here? The feed is uh, entering here moving all the way going down up to stage n your feed is entering here from the left going all the way right. So, you are both these are moving counter current to each other. So, both are moving counter current to each other and they are going to have n stages in this particular design and that is why it is called a n stage counter current uh, design. So, again the advantage is you are not uh, adding any fresh solvent in this particular case. Okay. Okay. Let us try to derive some equations for a counter current multi state process. Imagine you have n stages, your feed is entering from this sand at a concentration of the solute as x f and after n stages of extraction the 
raffinate contains concentration of x r and your solvent is entering from the left hand side and it is travelling in each stage and then finally, leaving the train. So, the solvent that is entering on the left hand side is a fresh solvent. So, uh, it does not contain any solute, but after the stage 1 it would have picked up some solute. So, whatever solvent entering stage 2 or subsequent stages will always contain some solute. Okay. And the streams that are leaving for example, if you take this stage these are the two streams. If you take this particular stage these are the two streams, if you take this particular stage these are the two streams, if you take this stage these are the two streams and these two streams are on equilibrium. The solute concentration in these two streams are on equilibrium and K is the concentration of the solute in the solvent that is leaving this particular stage divided by the concentration of the solute in the raffinate in this particular stage. So, if you take this stage for example, the solvent that is leaving is here. Okay. So, there is a difference between uh, the solvent that is leaving and the um, concentration of the solute in the feed stage. So, if you do that you can do a mass balance for each of these stages and uh, when you do a mass balance you can uh, connect the concentration of the solute um, that is entering from the feed to the concentration of the solute that is leaving the train of uh, um, counter current stages with the concentration of the solute that is uh, leaving with the solvent. And of course, you assume that the solvent that is entering your extractor train does not contain any solute. So, if you do that you will end up with the, this type of uh, equation where x r is the concentration of the solute that is uh, leaving the end stages and x f is your feed concentration. Okay. E f is your extraction efficiency, n is the number of stages. So, E f is nothing but S k divided by f. Okay. S is the amount of uh, solvent you take and f is the amount of uh, um, broth or the aqueous or the heavies you take. Okay. So, um, the equation looks like this where x r is the concentration of the uh, solute in the raffinate, x f is the concentration of the solute in the feed. Um, so, there will be a massive decrease in the concentration from x f to x r um, because of this particular term E f minus 1 divided by E f n plus 1 minus 1. Okay. So, uh, what can we do with this equation? We can use this equation to see what will be the amount extracted starting from a feed concentration of x f going down to x f x r if I know the number of stages n or conversely I can calculate the number of stages if I know what efficiency of extraction I desire. Okay. So, if I say I will want to reduce the concentration um, in the fermentation broth from 10 millimole per liter to 1 millimole per liter using a solvent of so many liters. If I know the k value how many stages I do I require in a counter current extraction system. So, I can use this equation and I can calculate what will be my n that is number of stages. So, I can use this set of equations for two different purposes. One is to calculate the extraction efficiency um, when I know the um, number of stages and when I know the operating conditions. The other is uh, to calculate uh, the uh, number of stages required to achieve a particular extraction efficiency. So, that is the uh, beauty of this uh, particular um, set of equations. So, I can use it for simulation purposes as well as I can use it for design purposes. So, we looked at uh, two different types of uh, uh, train of uh, extraction stage process. One is the cross flow system and the other one is the 
counter current system. So, for both these uh, systems the equations for extraction efficiency um, is quite different from one another and it depends upon the operating conditions like uh, the quantity of feed you take, the quantity of solvent you take, uh, the partition coefficient, the k value. Um, so, these determine your either extraction efficiency or the um, separation efficiency. Now, there is one more type of design which is uh, slightly more different. You are introducing your feed somewhere in the middle rather than from one end, you are introducing it from the middle like this. So, uh, introducing your feed at a concentration like this. And uh, from one end you are introducing just the heavy liquid without any solute that is quantity of Q. So, F plus Q gets added up here and uh, the extraction concentration changes or decreases from X f to X r. Now, your solvent is introduced from the left hand side and the solvent is uh, free from any solute that means there are there is no solute present in the solvent and it moves here. So, again solvent is added only in one place um, like a normal uh, counter current system. So, this design is slightly more uh, complicated when compared to the previous simple counter current type of design okay? because your feed is added somewhere in the middle. So, when you take this type of system and you perform mass balance, you end up with an equation slightly more complicated looking actually. Okay. So, this equation again you can calculate the um, concentration of the solute in the final raffinate. So, if you look this side, you will have Q as your heavy and S as your solvent flow. Whereas, if you look here this side you will have F plus Q coming in and F plus Q going out and S is your solvent flow. So, you can consider this as one set of counter current system and this is another set of counter current system and you can perform a mass balance to get a overall mass balance for the entire cross flow multi stage uh, extraction system. So, again this equation can be used for many purposes, we can calculate how many stages I require if I want to extract a solute from a concentration of X f to X r or if I know the X f and X r, I can calculate how many stages do I require. In addition we can also calculate what should be the place where I introduce my feed should I should be introduced in stage 1, stage 2 or stage 3 because that is k, k tells you the kth introduction of the feed in the kth stage. So, I can use this equation to calculate where should I introduce my feed to get a best separation. So, should I be introducing in the second stage or third stage or fourth stage and so on actually. So, here this type of design has one more parameter which you can play around with for improving your separation efficiency. Whereas, in a counter current system you had only the n there that is number of stages whereas, here you have n as well as k, n is the number of stages, k is the stage at which you introduce your feed. So, we can play around with both n and k to get the best uh, separation efficiencies. So, again uh, although this equation looks very difficult or complicated and um, it is again all based on mass balance. There is no reaction taking place in extraction, you just have mass balances happening. You have a mass balance for input, mass output and then you just equate the input equal to output and um, that gives you a balance for one stage and so on. So, you build up the multi stage process. The commercially there are many types of extractions that are used. 
one is the mixer settler. Mixer settler is nothing but you mix your solvent with the feed um, using a mechanical agitation and then allow them to settle down or uh, allow the layers to separate out under gravity conditions that is called mixer settler. Next is a centrifugal type of uh, design where I as I explained when the density difference between the two streams are minimal then uh, you can use centrifugal forces to achieve the separation of the two streams. If the density difference is large we can use a normal gravity type of settling. So, centrifugal liquid liquid centrifugal separators are uh, popular if the density differences are minimum. Third is the static column contactor that means, you have large tall columns where uh, the two streams come in contact, but there is no mechanical agitation. So, you have uh, you, you have like a jet uh, contactor or you can have a bubble column contactor and so on actually. In an agitated column you, you have a column you also have a mechanical agitation which creates a turbulence and mixing of both these streams. So, again uh, the idea is to improve your mass transfer. So, these are the four types of uh, designs uh, which uh, we employ in an industrial scale to achieve uh, a good uh, liquid liquid extraction. Each of them have advantages and disadvantages. If you go for a mixer settler, the floor space will be very high. If you go for a column design, um, it occupies minimum floor space. If you go for agitated design, mass transfers are very high, but uh, the disadvantage is you need uh, mechanical uh, motors to operate. So, your operating cost is very high. Centrifugal devices are uh, uh, very efficient, it consumes uh, very little time for extraction, but then uh, your cost may be very high, uh, your operating cost also may be high. So, each one of them have their advantages and uh, disadvantages and uh, one selects based on the requirements and the criteria um, of the separation. So, these are the two factors which one need to consider and as I mentioned in my uh, very beginning of this there are two important principles which one need to consider. One is the thermodynamics, thermodynamics determines the, uh, the partition coefficient and uh, kinetics determines the rate at which the solute moves from the heavy phase or the aqueous phase into the solvent phase or the light phase. So, if the partition coefficient is very high that means, concentration of the solute uh, in the solvent layer will be much higher when compared to the concentration of the solute in the raffinate layer. Um, so, your efficiency of separation is very good. If your mass transfer is very high, the rate at which the solute moves from the uh, heavy phase into the light phase is going to be very high. That means, I can uh, do the extraction job very, very fast. Ideally, you would like to speed up the process of extraction, um, so that the overall time of extraction is minimal. So, um, how do you achieve higher mass transfer? by improving surface area, by creating turbulence, by having a lower viscosity and so on actually. How do you achieve uh, better uh, extraction efficiency or partition coefficient? We cannot do much about it, we have to have a solvent selection. That means, in my lab I go and select a suitable solvent which will have a very high partition coefficient. Operationally, I will not be able to modify K, but I need to actually select a proper solvent which will have a higher value of K or the partition coefficient. That is the only thing I can do. But then, um, as I explained, partition coefficient alone might not be enough because there might be several other factors you need to consider uh, when you are selecting your solvent because of the safety issues involved, because of the cost because of the recoverability and because of the selectivity. That means, the solvent should be selectively extracting only the particular solute of your interest instead of uh, extracting other solutes. So, all these factors also come into picture and you need to consider those aspects also when you select your solvent. But uh, the mass transfer affects the rate at which the um, solute moves into the solvent phase and the 
um, thermodynamics determines the partition coefficient or the ratio of uh, the concentration of the solute in the light as well as in the heavy layer actually. So, one can play around with operating conditions, one can play around with the solvent selection criteria to have a best extraction process.